everyone, I'm Bill. This is the LP Kids Connect. And when I was a kid, I was never around very many people. Primarily day in and day out, it was just me and my mom at home together. My dad was a truck driver back in those days and on the road for most of the week. While my siblings, uh, my siblings weren't really around all that much or had already moved out by the time I'd gotten very old. Because of this, as I grew up over the years, I began to turn into something of a quiet, bashful kind of kid, introverted, you might say. I thought a lot, was very creative, but never really said much or wanted to be around many other people outside of my immediate family. That's why whenever my mom and I would go out to the store to have donuts together or to do whatever errands we had to do for the day, she always tried to push me a little bit and get me to do things that she knew made me uncomfortable like actually getting me to talk to any cashiers that we were dealing with if I ever wanted to help pay the bill, as opposed to me just pushing the money across the counter with my tiny little arms and then leaving the rest of the conversation to the adults. And even though I never really liked it whenever she made me do things like that, I knew then as much as I didn't want to admit it, and I absolutely know now that she wasn't doing it to be mean or to ruin my day, but to help me to teach me, to allow me to see areas where I might not yet be the strongest and to push me forward so that I could eventually move past them and become a better, healthier adult. All of us, whether we realize it or not, are just like I was when I was a little kid. That's not to say you were introverted or bashful like uh, I was. I've taught some of you long enough to know that that's not the case. But that each and every one of you has areas of strengths and weaknesses built into who you are as people and that Whenever life pushes you into one of those weaker, more uncomfortable areas to help you grow, the first place that we all want to retreat back to is our comfort zones. Those places, and sometimes even people, in our lives that allow us to stay exactly as we are now, never challenging us or pushing back against us so that we can become stronger, better, healthier, and more capable kids and adults. The truth of the matter is, if you want to grow up and mature in your life, whether it's in your mind, in your body, or in your faith, you need to be challenged and you need to push yourself, even if just a little bit at a time, beyond the things that make you nervous, make you bashful, make you afraid, or make you want to freeze in your tracks, beyond your comfort zones. If you want to make your body stronger, you can't do that by just sitting on the couch or at a computer screen all day. You have to get up, run around, exercise, push your muscles to start doing greater and greater things than you've done before. If you want to make your mind stronger, meanwhile, you can't do that by just watching cartoons or YouTube videos, goofing off or napping the day away. You have to challenge it. Read books on subjects you don't already know about. Do puzzles that stretch your memory and your ability to solve problems. Play games that expand the realms of your creativity. And if you want to grow bolder and more like Jesus in your faith, then you need to step out of your comfort zone, stop hiding who you are as a follower of Jesus, and start being willing to walk through the challenges, struggles, and big goals that God allows you uh, to come your way in life, much like my mom did for me when I was a kid, and learn fully to trust and rely on Him. To look more closely at this subject of dropping fear and wor worry, stepping out of your comfort zones and growing in our faith, Go grab your Bibles real quick if you have them nearby and turn with me to Exodus chapters 3 and 4 as we read together the story of how God had to encourage a man by the name of Moses to step out of his comfort zone so that he could grow as a leader, as a follower of God, and eventually save his people from slavery. One day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He had led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, he said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I've, I've, I've got to go see. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who sent you. 
When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, What is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. The elders of Israel will accept your message. Then you and the elders must go to the king of Egypt and tell him, The Lord, the uh, the God of the Hebrews, has has met with us. So please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But Moses protested again, What if they don't believe me or listen to me? What if they say, The Lord never appeared to you? Then the Lord asked him, What's in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Throw it on the ground, the Lord told him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. Then the Lord told him, reach out and grab its tail. So Moses reached out and grabbed it and it turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. Perform this sign, the Lord told him. Then they will believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob really has appeared to you. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, O Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I I get tongue-tied, and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, Who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak? Hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. Now, The thing to remember uh, with the story of Moses here is that this isn't actually where his story began. In fact, at this point, Moses was closer to the end of his life than the beginning, being around 80 years old when the Lord called him, which meant that he was already carrying around a lot of emotional baggage and history with him when he had his divine encounter at Sinai. Born to an Israelite family during a time when all male children of a certain age were being killed by their Egyptian masters, Moses Moses was placed in a basket in the Nile River by his mother to save his life, where he was then rescued by the daughter of Egypt's pharaoh and raised as an adopted son in the king's court. Despite this happy blessing, however, life was not all smooth sailing for Moses, as after he'd become an, an adult, he ended up killing an Egyptian who he saw beating an Israelite slave and had to flee for his life to survive, leaving all that he'd known and loved behind. It was during this time on the fringes of society, way out in the wilderness, however, when Moses met a priest by the name of Jethro, whose kindness changed his life, as he was now finally able to find some peace, settle down, marry one of Jethro's daughters, and become a shepherd in the service of his brand new father-in-law for over 40 years, after which the Lord finally made his grand appearance to Moses in the not-so-burning, burning bush. Can you imagine, then, the absolute flood of emotions that must have overtaken Moses in this moment? After centuries of silence, the God of his ancestors was speaking once again and speaking directly to him. And not only was God speaking to him, but he was also giving him a mission to leave this place of literal comfort and safety out here in the wilderness and return to Egypt, the home that he'd left behind decades before in the place where he'd once been a wanted man with a death sentence hanging over his head, to stand defiantly before one of the most powerful men in the world and demand that the Israelites be set free from their slavery with no power influence to his name to back, up, uh, back him up. No doubt, as his, as his many, many, many yeah buts to the Lord will attest, Moses must have been terrified at this future he now faced. He was just the son of slaves, a disgraced prince, and a self-exiled shepherd. What good could he accomplish? And yet, as the Lord was trying to teach Moses in this moment and through these events, who needed power or influence and what enemy could stand in his way and stop him when he had the God of the entire universe on his side? Where Moses only saw fear, worry, danger, and possibly death, God was trying to push him forward out of his comfort zone and into a place where he could grow powerfully in his faith and fully obey the Lord, not only for his own sake, but also for the sake and safety of his people, the Israelites, and ultimately the success of God's rescue plan for all mankind. A lot was riding on the choices that Moses had to make here, and God wasn't about to let this man's fear, anxiety, self-doubts, or anything else stop or slow down his plans, or even keep Moses himself from becoming all that he could be for the Lord. And even though we might not be facing death at the hands of Egyptian kings or calling out for the release of millions of slaves from their imprisonment, 
God's goal is the same for us too. God doesn't want our comfort zones to keep us from being all that we can be or accomplishing all that we could accomplish in our faith when we're obedient to him. God's goal in our lives is to see good and healthy things grow within us so that each and every day we begin to think, speak, act, serve, and love more and more like Jesus. Sometimes he has to push us beyond what we're comfortable with so that we don't become stagnant in our faith, stuck in a rut, unable and unwilling to become stronger, more mature followers of him because where we are now and what we're doing now is more comfortable than what he's asking us to do instead. Sometimes that might mean he'll put us in places where we have to move beyond our fear of talking to people that we don't know so that we don't end up missing or wasting the opportunities that he gives us to share the good news about Jesus with others. At other times, that might mean he'll put us into places where we have to choose between risking our popularity or putting our own successes and dreams on hold so that we can be faithful to whatever big dreams or missions that he's placed within our hearts to chase after for the kingdom of God. Or at other times still, that might mean he'll, he'll allow us to go through struggles, conflicts, trials, and hard times in our lives or allow, or allow those we're close to to go through them instead so that we can all learn to become more faithful and more trusting of him in all things. New encounters, new challenges, and new struggles can all be scary for us, no matter how old we are or where we are in life. But with every step that we take outside of our comfort zones, with every fear, doubt, and worry that we're willing to face, we grow just that little bit more stronger by God's power and and are able to handle more pressures and more responsibilities than we ever thought we would have been able to otherwise. In my own life, too, God has had to push me in ways both big and small to help me grow in my faith and work hard to leave my comfort zones behind for the sake of what he's trying to accomplish within and through me. Going to bed early on Saturday nights and waking up even earlier on Sunday mornings, for example, is one of my least favorite things to do each week. But I keep doing them anyway so that I can be uh, better prepared for the opportunities that he gives me to spend time with and teach each and every one of you here at church. Making phone calls for Pastor Glenn, meanwhile, is never something that I look forward to. Not because I don't like helping him, of course, or talking to other people, but because I don't actually like talking on the phone, period. Give me an in-person conversation or an email any day and I'm golden. But a phone call, though? No, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I'll pass. Uh, I'll pass. Even despite how uncomfortable or awkward I might feel in these moments, though, I still go ahead and make the calls anyway because I know that there are important things that need to be done for the church and people waiting for help who need to hear back from us. Or how about big events like the Easter extravaganza? To me, they're stressful and tiring and like trying to build a Jenga tower in a windstorm sometimes. But at the same time, I still work hard to the best of my ability and form a great team every year to make them happen because I know how valuable they can be, both in giving families a chance to spend time together on a weekend in a safe and fun environment, and also in allowing LifePoint to introduce itself to people who might never set foot in a church otherwise. All of these things go against my personality natu- uh, what my personality naturally wants to do and what would be most comfortable and easy going for me. But I also know that at the same time, what's comfortable and what's easiest for me isn't always what's best for me either. Instead, I have to decide each and every day to step out of my comfort zone, drop my fears and worries, and do what needs to be done anyway out of a love for God and others and so that I can become a better, stronger, and more faithful follower of Jesus. What's the Lord placing on your heart that he wants you to do? In what ways is he calling you, even as a kid, to step out, serve him and others, and grow stronger as a follower of Jesus? May we all, this week, put our comfort zones a little bit further behind us and come closer to becoming exactly who God has made us and wants us to be in him. Let's pray together. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I thank you that even despite our struggles, even despite our worries and fears, dear Lord, that you love us, that you're there with us, and that you want to help us overcome what's holding us back, what's keeping us rooted in sin and safety and things that would uh, stop us from uh, fulfilling your mission and spreading uh, the good news about Jesus and being the church in the world where you've planted us. I just pray that you'll help each and every one of us to see those areas in our lives where we struggle with fear and doubt and worry and safety and our appearance, dear Lord, and just by your power and your grace and knowing that your Holy Spirit is with us, take step forward, steps forward to put those behind us a little bit more each and every day and become bolder in our faith and more like Jesus in all that we say and do and think. 
so that we can make a real impact in our schools, in our homes, and in our neighborhoods and communities for the sake of your kingdom, dear Lord. Be with us, uh, each and every one of us this week, dear Lord. Bless us as we continue on in this journey. And I just thank you for this opportunity that we've had to spend time together. And we just pray all of this now and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, this week's prayer focus for families. Pray that God will help us to develop the courage and trust to make him the number one priority in our lives. Pray that God will help us to overcome any fears, doubts, or other challenges in our lives that would keep us from coming out of our comfort zones and obeying him. Pray that God will open our eyes to the presence of pride in our lives, help us to humble ourselves and serve both him and others with all that we have, even when it's uncomfortable. And as for our family discussion questions this week, Describe a time in your life when you were asked to do something that was very intimidating or scary, and you didn't know exactly how it would turn out. How did you respond in this situation? Would you still respond the same way today? Why do you think people choose giving into fear and doubt sometimes over trusting God? How could stepping out of our comfort zones and fighting back our fears and anxiety lead us to become a blessing to others and for the kingdom of God? In today's story, what was the mission that God had given Moses? What objections did Moses give to fulfilling God's mission? Why, beyond the reasons that Moses gave, gave, do you think that he was afraid or uncomfortable with going back to Egypt? Uh, Egypt. In what ways did God say that he would help Moses step out of his comfort zone and fulfill his mission? How can the responses that God gave to Moses' objections give us comfort when we need to step out of our own comfort zones? In In what ways can God help us to do this? And read Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 25. What do these verses say that we need to do as followers of Jesus to truly grow in our faith and serve the Lord with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength? Can you think of any times where Jesus had to step out of a comfort zone, uh, zone turn his back on fear and, or, and turn his back on fear or anxiety, and simply obey and trust God the Father with what was going to happen? What practice did he often do in his life to seek God's help, comfort, and guidance as he went about his ministry? How can practices like praying, reading our Bibles, and spending time with other followers of Jesus help us as God teaches us and pushes us farther out of our comfort zones? And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another LP Kids Connect uh, here in our Drop Everything series. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're at home or here at church with us today. Uh, God bless you all. My name is, as always, Bill. I'm the kids pastor here at LifePoint. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves and each other. And we'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.